Hey everybody, we're back at long last with another breakdown video for a Middle Earth project. Today we've got the announcement trailer for the new Tales of the Shire video game, which we're going to go through shot by shot and see what clues we can find out about the gameplay and story. And if you're interested in Middle Earth, including future breakdowns on games, shows, and films, I'd love it if you hit subscribe and the bell so you get your dose of Tolkien each and every week here on Nerd of the Rings. In our first significant look at this game, we start with a hobbit holding a lantern making their way through the Shire. It's worth noting that this is labeled as alpha footage, so this isn't the final graphical quality of the game. Now personally, I don't think this is really the kind of game that needs to stretch the boundaries of next-gen consoles, and some shots we get to shortly already look pretty great. We see our hobbit heading toward an open hobbit hole door, and get a nice little transition to the live action prop book from the initial teaser for this game. Now, if you haven't seen it yet, I had a fun interview with some of the Weta creatives behind this very game, and they shared how this book was a prop made by their friends over in the workshop, which uses fishing wire to make the book stop on certain pages. The real life prop is pretty incredible, and we do see it briefly turn to a page with signs for Bywater, the Green Dragon, that is the famous pub from both the books and films, and most notably, the Ivy Bush. In my video on the pubs of Middle-earth, we found that the Ivy Bush is pretty close to the Green Dragon and was frequented by a lot of the same customers. Notably, this is where we find Gaffer Gamgee, Ted Sandyman, Old Noakes, Daddy Twofoot, and others gossiping about Bilbo and Frodo before the former's 111th birthday party. If this is any indication, I think we could be getting a decent number of locations that only get a brief mention in the books. We also see on the pages some artwork of cattle and some sketches of hobbits. Maybe we'll get to raise some livestock as part of this game. Next up, the page very briefly shows a table of hobbit food, a chimney, a hobbit hole, and some kind of doll. And if you did catch my interview, you will have already seen that they also have this as a real prop in the Tales of the Shire office. We next see a sketch of a hedgehog followed by some kind of rock structures. The upper one seems to possibly depict a fork in the road. I gotta say, while this may just be a depiction of the road, it kinda gave me a Barrow Downs vibe initially. Though I doubt a cozy Hobbit game for all ages would go somewhere that dark. The voiceover even indicates that while there are many tales of Middle-earth, including those of courage and brave deeds in dark times, that is not this story. So I fully expect this game to maintain a light and breezy feel throughout. Next, the frame zooms in on a page of hobbit holes and fish drawings to give us some really nice scenery shots of the Shire. And I gotta say, these are pretty great shots to kick the trailer into gear. They definitely do a good job of giving just straight vibes for the game which to me just looks pretty charming. We see a shot of the mill along the water, so depending on when and where this takes place, maybe we will meet one of the Sandyman family, which are said to have run the mill for some time. The next shot gives us a look at some of the wildlife in the Shire, with some ducks on the pond and sheep and ponies in the field. We see a couple of hobbits relaxing on a bench by the water's edge with some butterflies floating about. I can't help but think there's going to be an appeal in just hanging out in the Shire in this game. I've certainly enjoyed just taking in the sights of Lotro here and there, and can totally see that being the case for folks here. The next couple of shots give us a hint at some gameplay elements, as we see a hobbit fishing on a dock. I have a feeling this will be one of the activities that we can do as we live out our hobbit life. After a splash screen that says Forage Friendships, we see the same hobbit walking alongside another. In the next shot, I think we're getting another gameplay element of actual foraging. It looks like our friend in the foreground is picking some kind of plants. This seems to be backed up by the next couple shots, where we see a focus on a plant of some kind, perhaps a type of mushroom. Just a couple shots later, we see these being chopped up by the focal hobbit of the teaser. In between, we see the hobbit approach what I'm guessing is a vendor who looks to be selling various vegetables. And like any decent hobbit, this one seems to have a sizable pantry full of foods either purchased or foraged. After chopping up the mushrooms, we see the hobbit cooking and putting out an impressive spread for their hobbit friends. As one might expect with hobbit folk, it seems like there will be a pretty decent focus on food here. A quick couple observations on this shot in particular. I love this fireplace in the background, and I'm really curious to see how customizable the hobbit holes are. 
Also, look at the size of this fish. This thing is massive compared to the hobbits. Another splash screen declares, decorate your home. And we see a sequence of shots showing different furniture and arrangements in the room. So clearly we'll be able to customize a hobbit hole of our own. A few notable things that stuck out to me were the pine cone decorations, the jewelry box, and these bird carvings. Naturally, I wonder how many of these things we can interact with. Like if we can put things in this jewelry box or if this scroll is something that we can read. Next up, we have another possible gameplay element where we see a garden growing over time. And we see the same hobbit carrying a water can to tend the plants. What really stuck out to me here is the obvious difference in color of the trees between the shots. It definitely goes from summer to fall here. And honestly, I hadn't even thought about seasons prior to these shots, and I'm kind of pumped about it. Seeing such a familiar location in various seasons is kind of fun. And while it's not the same level graphically as a Hogwarts legacy, there's a certain charm in both of seeing iconic locations in different seasons. Now, a later shot seems to cycle through the different seasons, which looks pretty fun, though I will admit I would really like to see the final product feature snow on the ground if this shot is meant to be winter. Going back just a touch, we also saw a splash screen saying Explore Bywater, which seems to give an indication that the game will focus on this specific East Farthing Village, rather than the entire Shire. This was something I definitely hadn't got a sense for previously, and I wonder if this game does well if they'll look to expand the Shire further with DLCs. Bywater does have many of the most recognizable locations we find in the books, so it makes sense as a starting point. And to be honest, mapping the entire Shire was probably unlikely without significantly scaling it down. So I don't think this is an automatic negative. We'll see when the game comes out how big or small the map feels. We also have a shot of our hobbit skipping through the Shire, next to a hobbit hole and a lamp post with a bird perched atop. After the seasons shot, we see a hobbit skip their way into what looks like a gathering place. Kind of like a hub of activity, it looks like. I could see folks thinking this tree in the middle is the party tree, though that was in the middle of a field, so I think it's just a conveniently placed tree among all the banners. We see some hobbits gathered in this same location before the big reveal of Gandalf. Now we don't see his face, but I think given his attire and holding a staff, there's little doubt who this is. He even seems to have Glamdring at his side. Which, if that's the case, it would confirm that this takes place between The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. After all, he is still Gandalf the Grey here, and he wouldn't have Glamdring until after Bilbo's adventure. Another quick note on this shot is we see a cow in the background, and I love how big it seems compared to The Hobbit. It and Gandalf give us a nice reminder of how tiny the main characters are here. One final note on Gandalf, it'll be interesting to see his role in the game, and how he interacts with hobbits who aren't Bagginses. We get a couple more environment shots of the Shire, including a hobbit hole with a tree growing out of the top much the same way as Bag End. Next, we see a big gathering of hobbits with many cheering and clapping, except this guy. He looks super grumpy about something. At second glance though, I notice this character in the back who throws an ax on their shoulder, and I'm pretty certain we are seeing a full bearded female dwarf. As we know, there was an entire realm of dwarves living in the Blue Mountains in the late Third Age, and they were known to travel through the Shire going to and from. So perhaps we'll have some dwarf friends in this game. And we close with a banner reading, Welcome Home Hobbit, with fireworks, no doubt Gandalf's, going off in the background. And again, I wonder how much of Gandalf we'll see in this game. We know he would visit the Shire from time to time, and depending on when this falls, if it is indeed between the Hobbits and the Lord of the Rings, he could be visiting Bilbo or checking in on Frodo. And finally, we see the previously released promo image, stating the game is coming later this year to PS5, Xbox Series X and S, Nintendo Switch, and Steam. And I just had to point out that my absolute favorite part of this image is the duck wearing what appears to be a dwarf helm and possibly even a chest plate. And now I'm super curious what this duck story is. While we don't know a release date yet, personally, I'm really intrigued by what seems like a game with the potential to be really charming. Like I've said before, I never expected this game to be some huge budget graphics extravaganza. And I think it's kind of silly when people expect every game to be that. 
And while I do hope that there are some big AAA Middle Earth games in the future, there's definitely room for quality games of any shape and size. And honestly, if there's one game concept that makes sense to have a more cartoony and all ages feel to it, it's a relaxing Shire game. But what do you think? Did you enjoy this new trailer? Does Tales of the Shire look like a game you'll enjoy? Let me know in the comments. And let me know if you'd like to see some Tales of the Shire gameplay streams here on Nerd of the Rings.